guys, it's Brandon. I have my very first advice video today. So in one of my last videos of 2016, I asked you guys to send me in any of your problems or questions for an advice video. I am really excited to finally get to do this, but there are a few things that I want to just like lay out on the table before we start. Or on the floor, I guess, because I don't technically have a table, but you know, form of expression, let's move on. <laughs> As always, my advice is very dubious. I am not the master of the universe. I do not know everything, which I know is surprising but my advice may not be helpful to you. You may have a totally different opinion and that's totally okay. I encourage you to add on to the things I say or disagree with what I say in the comments. The only thing I ask is that we keep this as non-judgmental as possible because it is very hard to send in details of your personal life for a public video. So not that you wouldn't be, but I just wanna remind everyone to be as respectful as possible please and thank you. <laughs> and also, if you would like to send me a question or a problem for an advice video, I will leave my email address in the description of this video, and I will always keep the sender name anonymous unless you tell me otherwise. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, let's get to the question. About six months ago, I met a girl, Kate, and we clicked immediately. She's funny, charming, sharp, artistic, a gifted writer and storyteller. We have common interests, I make her laugh, but we're in no rush to become more than friends. But she thought I should know that a couple years ago she was disciplined for failing to report her then boyfriend's role in a hazing incident. I began to look into it on my own time, and it wasn't hard to find a couple of objective accounts that tell a different story. One where she was, in fact, an active participant. The thing is, if true, the incident itself is not so bad that I have to lose all respect for her, but it's embarrassing enough that I see why a person would want to lie about it, or at least spin it a different way. I can't let it go, and I don't want to bail before I give her the chance to explain what's up. If possible, I want to preserve this friendship and move forward in the spirit of genuine trust, but if confronting her risks losing her as a friend, so be it. What's the best way to confront her about this? What do you do if you catch your friend in a lie? So I find this question really interesting because I think I'm going to have a little bit of a different perspective than most people, or at least I'm not gonna jump to the same conclusions that I think people would jump to in this situation. It's funny because when you Google something like, is lying bad, you get answers like, lying is morally wrong, and lying is never a good decision, and random pictures of dogs. But with most things, I think there's a gray area. But I think it's important to look at this from a perspective of why could she be lying to me and does she potentially have a legitimate reason? And this is especially important if you're planning on confronting her, which it sounds like you are. From personal experience, I always think it's better to come at these things from an empathetic viewpoint because confronting someone with an air of judgment pretty much never goes well. And in a situation like this, I think there's always a possibility that there's going to be some guilt associated with it. Whether she was an active participant or not, I think just the fact that she's telling you shows that she's not really proud of what happened and she doesn't want you to find out from someone else. Especially if it happened a couple of years ago, like you said, and she still feels the need to tell you. And to me that shows that she probably still carries around some of that guilt and it's been a part of her and a part of her past that she hasn't really been able to walk away from. And a lot of times with guilt, I think we take ourselves out of the narrative in our own mind to kind of justify to ourselves that we're not at fault. Like, I can even think of a few situations in my life where something happened and I was very quick to put the blame on someone else or take myself out of the situation just because in my mind I couldn't believe that I could have done something like that. So you kind of refuse to believe it no matter how big or small the situation is. It's kind of like the idea that a villain in someone else's story is actually the hero of his own. And there are always multiple sides to every story because we can justify our actions, but we can't really justify someone else's. Which leads me to my next point about why she could be lying, which is that people lie for self-preservation. Knowing that you two are like fairly new friends, it's not hard for me to imagine a scenario of her trying to portray the best version of herself to you. Just as you're probably doing with her and we all do when we meet someone new. And at the very least, she's still being honest with you. And sure, that may be somewhat fabricated to make her look better, but I can't really blame her for that. I mean, maybe you all disagree with me, but like on the lying deception scale, to me, this seems like it's on the lower end. I mean, just the fact that she felt the need to tell you, even though it happened a few years ago, 
even though she's probably somewhat of a different person now, I think speaks good of her character and I think you recognize that. And I don't think you're coming at this from a place of judgment because you said yourself you haven't lost respect for her and you don't think she's that person anymore. In terms of confronting her, um, I think you're totally justified in wanting to create some sort of trust. But as I said before, and I'll say it again, it's important to come at this not from a place of judgment but from a place of empathy. And keeping in mind that she's probably not going to admit she lied to you, either because she doesn't believe she lied to you, or she's trying to protect herself in some way. And sure, maybe she fabricated some things, um, but we all do it. You know you do. Don't lie to me. I know everything, remember? And there's always the possibility that her perception of what happened has really altered in the last couple of years. I mean, sure, she could be flat out lying to you, in which case, I don't blame you for confronting her about it. But the way you describe her doesn't make her seem like that kind of person, and so it doesn't seem like you think of her as that person either. So if I were you, which I'm not, I want to reiterate, I am not you, you do not have to take my advice, you can do whatever the hell you want. But if I were you, I wouldn't make it into a big deal, like, we have to have this conversation or else I cannot possibly think of you the same way. But I think you're entitled to ask questions, especially because she brought it up as something she felt you needed to know about her. So as long as you come at it from a non-judgmental place, I would think she'd be accepting. If not, then I guess you have your answer as to what type of person she is. But I think you know deep down whether or not you trust her, and I would be prepared for whatever she says to not really change your opinion. So yeah, I think that's everything I have to say. As always, as I've said a million times in this video, my advice is dubious, so take what you will. And if you guys have any similar or different thoughts from me, Go ahead and leave them in the comments, um, I would love to hear your thoughts. And again, if you want to send in any questions for advice, my email's in the description. Um, I would love to do one of these every month or so. Alright, so that's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next week with another one. Bye guys!